Hey up, it's Steve from that old Yorkshire Geek, and it's time to review uh, episode 6 of season 5 of Star Trek Lower Decks. This episode's called uh, Of Gods and Angles. Uh, not Angels. I think on Wikipedia, I think it said Gods and Angels. But it's uh, it's actually Angles, which, you know, is relevant. So, but before we start, don't forget, like and subscribe, share the videos, drop a comment, hit the notification bell if you're subscribed already. Explore the description for various links for merch, such as t-shirts like this, saying bloody hell Lara, that's from my gaming. I say that a lot. What else? Uh, Patreon, my websites, my books, etc. There's my books. Give them a look. They're on Amazon, Kindle and paperback. What else? I'm sure there's something else. Oh, why? Become a member. Become a member, uh, and then you'll see early access stuff or exclusive uh, videos and stuff like that. I'll throw a super chat or super thank, not super chat, that's in live streams. A super thanks my way, which will help keep the lights on because uh, I'm recording this on uh, StreamYards. Usually I do it on Streamlabs, but for some reason, there's reasons why I'm doing it on StreamYards this week. Uh, StreamYards have hiked their prices quite considerably. There's a lot of angry people out there. Streamyards, if you're listening, probably not, but um, anyway, the up their prices quite considerably, and um, the service doesn't seem to imp have improved very much, in my opinion. But anyway, anyway, right, let's get into this this episode of uh, Star Trek Lower Decks, the final season. They say there's rumours, not rumours, but speculation, I suppose you could say, or hopes. From some quarters that we, this might not be the last we see of the Lower Decks crew. Are we going to see them in live action in some way? Much like we did in Strange New Worlds, that special crossover episode. Are we going to see like a, um, a Lower Decks movie? Or is is it going to get picked up somewhere else? Like um, Star Trek Prodigy went over to Netflix, didn't it? Um, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Right, so let's have a look. Here it is. Uh, this episode, and we're watching it through Prime Video um, for reasons. Right, so here we go. Let's uh, just, just, I'm just going to keep skipping. Right, the Cerritos is by two nebulas, as you can see. Uh, this is where uh, two nebulas have collided. Well, they're of gods and angles. Uh, a red nebula and a blue nebula. And what it is, life forms live in these nebulas. One life form, they're like energy, energy life forms. One life form is cube shaped, one life form is orb shaped. And they've been at war, uh, but now the Cerritos is there to, to mediate, you know, in peace talks and stuff like that. So that's uh, what well, there they are. Look, photonic species made of pure energy. We'd seen photonic life forms before in Voyager, uh, really early on in season one. I don't know if these are related to that, but anyway. Uh, but they don't get on, they don't get on. There you go. You wish you had curves like this, you pointy freak, says that orb. Anyway, so... And we were also introduced to a new crewmate. There she is. I've forgotten the name. It'll tell us in a minute. But it turns that she's an an, an ancestor, not an ancestor, a descendant of Zeus. Remember Apollo from Who Mourns for Adonais? He told us in that episode that the others, Zeus and Hera and whatever, and all the others, Aphrodite, all went off and to, to, they left him there on that planet. They went off to do all the things. The suggestion was that they essentially died, that they dissipated into the universe. Uh, and maybe they did, I don't know. But anyway, she's a descendant of Zeus. so uh, And she's, she's claiming that's why she's got this laurel leaf around her head and it's part of her, it's not something she can take off. And uh, they're, they're keep asking, does she have powers and stuff? She keeps saying she doesn't have powers. It turns out she does. Anyway, but she's a troublemaker. She's much like uh, Marina was early on uh, in the first few seasons. She's uh, always getting into trouble, and she's a, a trouble causer. So, right. Anyway, there we get the uh, the opening uh, credits. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. And nothing new has been added to this part, by the way. Uh, not that I noticed, anyway. I always like that. This that uh, as <laughs> it just it just looks at you. It just looks at you, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like, what you're looking at. I'm I'm sucking the energy out of this nacelle. Right. So here we go. There we go. Of gods and angles. 
this is where Mariner decides to take this new character. It's just, uh, Matt Ransom's accused of stealing his kettlebells, so, he, you know, he'll get angry, because he can't, how can he make his gains without his, his bells? So, Mariner decides to take this young uh, ensign, there we go, Ollie, Ollie. Uh, I'm sure that's short for something, I don't know, but uh, anyway. Take her under her wing and try and get the rough edges off. Because uh, remember, Mariner's a, a model officer now. It seems. So anyway, off we go. Right, so that's basically the, the gist. That's the, the beast, the A story. I don't know which is A and B, to be honest. The, the, I suppose the A story is the these cubes and, and orbs. And the B story is Mariner and Ollie. So off we go. Anyway, uh, and here we go, she's causing trouble again, she's riding some sort of sled, uh, anti-gravity sled, and crashing it and stuff like that. Here's Boimler, as we can see, his, uh, his facial hair's coming along, he's now got a goatee, it, it, it fitting in the mirror universe. <laughs> Although I keep saying, only Spock had a goatee in the mirror universe, but never mind. There's his action figures look. Uh, remember he shares a room with uh, Rutherford. This is where we learn that everybody knows he's got the, from the alternate universe that we saw in the first episode of this season, uh, he stole that Boimler's uh, pad from that universe. Uh, and everybody knows it. Everybody knows he's stolen it. He's trying to keep it secret, but everybody knows he's stolen that pad. So he's, he's, he's getting tips from that Boimler, because apparently that Boimler's, I don't know, for some reason, there's loads of information on this pad uh, about that Boimler. So he wants to be cool like that Boimler seems to be. So anyway, so that's what he's going to do. And and he also learns that um, ta in in the alternate universe, Tana, the cat doctor, uh, not doctor for cats. She is a cat that is a doctor, a K K Chian or whatever the hell they're called. She and that Boimler get on really well, and she's even given him a nickname, Flip. So he's going to try and get into the good graces of Tana. Anyway. So that's what's going to happen there. There he is. That's the end game. He's going to get, make friends with Anna. Meanwhile, Mariner's waiting for Ollie to arrive. This is she's back in the lower decks quarters because remember they're not lower deckers anymore. The, the junior lieutenants. And you can see the times: nine twenty-eight. She was supposed to meet her at oh nine hundred. She's half an hour late. I don't know why. Anyway, she, she finally arrives and she says she was working on this portable tractor beam that uh, she said she lost track of time and this tractor beam sort of like fritzes out and um, maybe something breaks right so off they go all right they've got to go and look after one of the, the a cube child or a teenage cube one of the ambassador's kids or whatever so they've got to go so they go to the quarters there's no answer and the, the so she uses a security override did everybody have a security override to open anybody's door you think it'd only be security that do that but anyway never mind they go in the little cube's missing and I, to be honest i thought it was dead because i thought this was what were left of it but it's just some sort of photonic residue uh, and we also see that um, a monitor uh, slight uh, has, uh, has disappeared as well so this kid's vanished it seems Anyway, there's assuming there's some sort of murders going on. Obviously, they're blaming the orbs. So that's uh, what they've got. They've got to solve that mystery. Uh, oh, he's Boimler uh, heading into sick bay to see if Anna uh, will accept him. He's trying to be helpful. He's, oh, right, she runs a book club, so he's trying to get to the book club. So he's bought, brought some books, but she doesn't want anything to do with him. And uh, he says the wrong thing to her. <laughs> he keeps saying flip using the word flip or flipping or whatever or flipped in every sentence and it gets it gets a really angry uh, so she attacks him in a minute meanwhile they're still looking for that uh, that cube oh they're going to this this they're going to the gym that's it they're in the gym and cubes and orbs are working out do they have to do they need to work out their energy the photonic but anyway the the see uh, an orb that's not glowing that's how dare you see me not glowing Anyway, the find, um, oh, that's where we learn about the the uh, laurel being part of her. She can't take it off. And she keeps saying she's no powers, but later on we, we learn that she does have powers. 
Anyway, right, so, hang on, the find that, there you go, that's there, what is it, well, check this out, oh, right, it's some sort of, it's like a pad, it's like an orb pad, which is why it's round, I suppose, there you go, it's anti-cube propaganda that um, that orb had, uh, so, that orb that they've just seen is now, you know, suspect number one, so the good that they are, they're questioning him, it, them, whatever. I think they, I think they, I think they call them them. I think it's all they, them stuff because they're neither male nor female. The cubes and orbs are they? but whatever. But they must have genders because of what happens later. Anyway, so they don't get anywhere with that. He learns that um, to Anna, we know swears a lot, so he thinks if I swear at to Anna, that might get her, get him in her good graces. So he's going to do that, speak her language. So he's swearing at her, and so she, obviously she doesn't like that. So this is where she attacks him, look, she rags the, the, the buggery out of him, <laughs> as we say. Now the, the orbs and cubes are at, at loggerheads again because they're accusing the orbs of murdering the, the, the teenage cube. That doesn't help with the, the negotiations. And as we see, there's... there's Battles going on now. That open war has broken out now on the the um, Cerritos. They've got to find a way to stop it. Back back here uh, in the, this locker, she finds a melted uh, the melted screen from that, that that kid's room, that cube teen's room. And she mentions to Zolly that uh, you know she mentioned earlier something about a a melted monitor and and and. Mariner says, how do you know it was melted? Because she stole it. And then she said, did you kill the kids? And no. And she went, she wanted, she went, she wanted to go there early. And she saw that uh, the kid were missing and she knew that the, the, they'd blame her because she, she does have powers. And here we go, she shows she's got like thunderbolt powers, but she, can, she can't really control it very well. And she knew that, that they'd uh, accuse her of uh, this cube teen's disappearance. But uh, anyway, meanwhile, all this this war's going on. She uses her powers now. She can absorb energy. That's what her power is. So she uses her powers to absorb all the energy from the uh, the orbs and the cubes so they stop fighting. Anyway, you've got all powers going, by the way, because she's draining energy from the Cerritos as well. So, all right, and the cubes all form into a, a, a massive huge cube and the orbs form into a massive orb. Uh, there they are. They're, they're, it's them that's draining energy from the Cerritos. It turns out that the, the kid and turns up, that the cube t uh, cube teen turns up. I'm sure he's got a name. Here, here they come uh, in a minute. There they are. And the, the teen cube turns up and... Turns out it's like it's it's Romeo and Juliet. He'd fallen in love with an orb, the 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 cube teen, and they've had a kid that's both cube and orb. It's a bit on the nose, so that's that that ends the war, so to speak. There we go. We will work together. So anyway, so there we go. And Boimler had got a lightning bolt up his ass, basically, and to Anna takes it out, and. Um, She's impressed with him now, so she invites him to join the book club. So he got what he, he got what he wanted, but uh, in a different way, did Boimler. So he's now in, into Anna's good graces. Anyway. All oh, right, and um, Rutherford, he sees what happened with Boimler, so he's thinking, all right, I I've, I've can use this, use, do what he did, because he saw how it was successful, but in a roundabout way. So he's going to do the same to get on the good side of Billups or something like that. Um, Tendy's saying, no, you can't just do that. He says, yes, I can. Anyway, uh, it seems that Ollie is now, you know, um, she's found a home on the Cerritos, which is, you know, fair enough. It's supposed to be the place, you know, where the, 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 the rubbish officers prove themselves. That's what the Cerritos is for now. And uh, they don't mention Starbase 8, for some reason. I don't think they do, anyway. Because this was her last chance, and you'd have thought, and after that, she'd get shipped off to Starbase 80, but they don't even mention it. I don't think they do, anyway. So she's part of the team, uh, but she's got to go in the brig, so that makes her angry. 
Uh, they found a way, I think, as well to stop her using her powers and throwing lightning bolts and stuff. So she's in the brig and um, being headstrong again. Mariner's keeping her company. So it's, it's like she's Mariner's best, or Mariner's her best friend, or trying their best to be her best friend now. It seems. And off they go, and that's it. Not the best episode. No mention whatsoever again of the overall story arc. You know, the quantum fissures. No mention of that again. But only, there's only four episodes left. We're over halfway through. But anyway, so, yeah. Not the best episode. It was okay. A bit on the nose with the cubes and the orbs and all that stuff. Whatever. But uh, there we go. So. I can't remember if I gave last week's a score. I'd give this like a 5 out of 10. Probably my least favourite episode so far this season. So, yeah, whatever. What's next week's episode? I can't remember. I will check. Next week's episode is called Fully Dilated. So, I'm guessing somebody's pregnant in that one. I bet it's a man. Bet it is. Because <sighs> we've seen... Uh, um, Rutherford, he gave birth, didn't he, a few seasons back. Um, so I bet it's a man that's pregnant. Bet it is. Bet it is. Or maybe it's um, going to be a reference to um, Keiko O'Brien, because, you know, there was that scene, wasn't there? But she gave birth um, on the uh, in 10 forward, didn't she? She gave birth to Molly in 10 forward uh, with uh, Worf's help. Um, so he used his tricorder, didn't he? Congratulations, you have dilated 10 centimetres. You may now give birth. But anyway, but anyway, that's next week's fully dilated. Uh, I've got a feeling that, that again, there's not going to be a mention of um, the quantum fissures next week. Anyway, so we'll leave it there. We will leave it there. Right. Uh, not the best episode. Five out of ten, I'm giving that one. Last week's Starbase 80, I don't know, seven, I suppose. If I didn't give it a score, maybe I did. I don't know. <laughs> but we'll leave it there. This uh, A forgettable episode, in my opinion. Uh, I'm sure other people loved it, but uh, I didn't. Um, so, whatever. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Uh, why would you like and subscribe after this crappy bloody video review? But never mind. <laughs> But do all that stuff. Oh, crack, I'm, hitting, I'm even hitting my microphone. Do all that stuff. And um, we'll see what happens next week with Fully Dilated. Not really looking forward to that one either, to be completely honest. Um, it's not been the best season so far, but it's, you know, it's not been terrible. It's still the best of the new treks, in my opinion. But uh, this season has not been... Uh, considering it's the final season... Anyway, we'll leave it there. So, thanks for watching. Wherever you are, look after each other. And until next time, I'll see you there.